Have you ever been having a really, really good day and something just kind of ruined it? Like, maybe the subway chick put too much chilli sauce on your meatballs. Or perhaps you threw a rod out the side of your race car's engine block. Oh, that's my dad, Danny, and I have been transforming this 300C from trash to track for quite a while now. But in the last 12 months, things have really started to uh, take flight. It starts, rather unsurprisingly, where we left off. Victorious from achieving our goal at Legends 2017, we look for new hills to climb. Pun intended. We settled on SA Time Attack, which would be one of the very first events to ever be held at Taylor Men's brand new, the Bend Motorsport Park. Time Attack is a motorsport where you race the clock. Only your best lap time matters, and you can do pretty much anything you want to your car to achieve it. 1000 horsepower engines, carbon fibre panels, massive brakes and trick suspension are the standard while a limit to running street legal tyres, rather than full racing slicks, is why these cars look so incredibly unique. With tyre grip limited, they turn to aerodynamics and, more specifically, downforce creation. You know planes, those big flying things, well they use wings, which create low pressure zones above and higher pressure zones below to physically lift you up into the air and towards your holiday. These time attack cars also use wings, but they flip them upside down to push the car into the ground, giving it more grip and improving lap times. There's a lot more at play here than just the wings too, with the splitter creating downforce on the front, various diffusers underneath, and canards, vortex, generators, air dams, spoilers, infinity wings, air guides, and ducts covering the body. These cars harness the air for grip, then use it to go faster than pretty much anything else in the world with four wheels and a roof. To fit in at this event, our Chrysler, with the aerodynamic properties of a brick, was going to need a little bit of work. From scratch I designed a rear wing and front splitter for the 300C inside of a 3D computer modelling program which are then tested and refined in a virtual wind tunnel. It is the largest, most optimally placed, most efficient and highest downforce producing design I could come up with inside of our regulations, engineering ability and aerodynamic understanding. No Captain Obvious, aesthetics wasn't much for consideration. I then took my drawings and had my wing mounts laser cut from 8mm aluminium plate and my blade cut from polyurethane foam. I had holes cut inside allowing me to insert aluminium rod and bolt the blade to the mounts. Next, I covered the foam with four layers of fiberglass, sanded it smooth-ish, then hit it with a layer of very expensive, very strong, and very sexy, if you're into that kind of thing, carbon fiber. The splitter was Dad's department, and he modified my design to improve the practicality, efficiency, and strength of the unit. It's two millimeter aluminum plate, made for maximum downforce and engineered to hold my body weight, which, for some reason, is the internationally approved test of a splitter's strength. All in all, our aero parts cost us about $500, when a decent wing alone starts around three grand before you make the modifications required to fit it. Sure, there are cheaper items on eBay, but the less said about those, the better. With the aero done, the car was retuned to make 400 rear kilowatts, then we threw on some secondhand wheels and tyres and swapped to an LSD diff, which required getting a professional modify the tail shaft. With some other small jobs complete, the car was finally ready at just past 1am the morning of the event. We got some very strange looks driving into a brand new, world-class motorsport facility for a top-level time attack event with our matte black, bewinged, shed-built land yacht in tow. But we were, of course, eager to prove the doubters wrong, and we're in a great position to do just that. Until our professionally modified tail shaft snapped just four corners into my very first lap. I will forever hold the honour of being one of the very first people to complete a lap of the Benz GT circuit while being towed behind an old Holden Statesman. Nothing, if not persistent. We went home and reset our horizons, and we set them rather boldly. Our new target being three different events in a single month, all of them hundreds of miles apart and increasingly high in profile, with the final event attracting tens of thousands of spectators, the world's biggest sports car manufacturers, hundreds of millions of dollars of irreplaceable metal, and driving legends from McRae to Brabham and Moffat to Lowndes. After fixing our tail shaft, we had the car tuned again, converting to E85 fuel to make 503 rear wheel kilowatts. That's in the region of 825 horsepower as measured by a manufacturer, which, to be frank, is bloody heaps. Following that, we refined the splitter for more front end downforce and custom built a bonnet duct and scoop to force fresh air down the hungry V8's throat. Then it was time to hit the track, with a newly dubbed Superbird 300C, named after a legendary large wing Chrysler that dominated NASCAR in the 70s, hitting test days at Malala and Tail and Bend. Teething problems plagued both days, but it was a lot of fun to get out there and let the big bird fly. 
Three weeks out from the first event, we decided to completely respray the entire car. We settled on a notoriously difficult gloss black finish, with purple and yellow glitter sprayed throughout, just for something different. Dad really knocked it out of the park with this one, and the big bird sparkles like a diamond in the sun. you remember the legend of the Lake Seal Climb as the scene of our victory over my daily, with this car setting a time of 63.2 seconds up the hill last year. Obviously, a lot had changed since then, and we had high hopes. A sub one minute run. I came close on several occasions, and had even topped it just to clip a cone and get a penalty. But for the last run of the weekend, we drilled an extra hole in the wings and plates for maximum downforce, then I, as the youth of today say, bloody sense it. With that imperfect lap, we hit a 57.93, blowing away our wildest expectations and good enough a 4th in class, 34th overall, a 5 second improvement on last year and just 8 seconds slower than the outright course record. Honestly, we couldn't have been any happier. The very next weekend, it was off to Victoria for the historic Geelong Revival event. This isn't typically our kind of thing, with a curved quarter mile drag sprint a long way from this car's intended purpose. The competing cars were next level, and the open to the crowd, moving car show style of the event was a true highlight. All weekend we answered questions and discussed the car at length with curious and confused bystanders. Well, well this is something completely different. We talked aero, Chryslers and V8s until we were sore in the mouth. We also did skids. Mad. Bloody. Skids. Try as I might, I couldn't get the power to the ground and we ended the event with a 12.5 second quarter mile pass. We also laid the longest set of black lines of any car at the event and to me, Dad and the crowd, that was so much cooler. Finally, it was a weekend off than the biggest event we're ever likely to do, the Adelaide Motorsport Festival. This world-renowned and extremely prestigious event uses part of the old Adelaide F1 circuit for an open to the public showcase of some of the world's rarest classic cars, fastest road cars and most successful race cars. It's also home to legendary drivers, car auctions, a stunt plane, 60,000 spectators and a couple of groups where regular Joes can apply to enter. Literally as a bit of a joke we submitted an application for the Time Attack group and by some miracle we were accepted. After a private test day, the crowd rolled in for the public showing. All morning the 300 was a bit of a curiosity for people, who, upon seeing it in a lineup of Supras and WRXs, probably couldn't figure out what in the hell it was doing there. It might have been like seeing a burger casually roll past on a sushi joint's conveyor belt. Then we had our first public session. I decided early on to take it easy. Then I decided to say, screw that, this is the bloody clips of track and I'm a V8 supercar driver. Those 15 minutes of jumping curbs Getting sideways and battling some of the quickest time attack cars in the state will probably forever remain the most fun I'll have in a car. Judging by the thumbs up and smiles we got from spectators on the way back to the pits, we weren't the only ones who enjoyed seeing the Superbird in full flight. In the couple of hour wait for the next session, we explored the event and chatted with our competitors and the spectators. At one point we even saw people pose for photos in front of the thing, which Dad and I still laugh about to this day. Then it was time for session two, and we were eager for a repeat performance. A few minutes in, I felt a bit of a cough, so I backed off for a while, but didn't think too much of it. The very next lap, at the same spot however, 
I felt a bang. Shrapnel and smoke filled my mirror, and as I tried to change down a gear, I quickly realised I had no drive. That's when I knew we had some very serious issues. As the centre chicane approached, I tried to brake, but coolant and oil covered the tyres. In the end, I threw the car sideways into the kerb, held on, and hoped for the best. By sheer luck, I made it through, got out of the way, pulled to a stop, grabbed my fire extinguisher, popped the bonnet, and looked down at what was left of our Chrysler's heart. To say we were disappointed would be a massive understatement. Dad and I put so much work, time, and money into being at this event, and we're having such a great time that it was beyond gutting to bow out like this. To any drivers who missed out on track time, or worse, were put into a dangerously slippery situation due to our engine failure, we are truly, truly sorry. Ultimately, a thrown Conrod was the illness, and as any car guy knows, the diagnosis is terminal. I'm afraid that, like an overly chilled meatball sub, the only place for our engine is in the bin. I'd like to thank my dad, Danny, for his endless passion, support, and work on this project. None of this would be possible or half as special without him. I'd also like to thank Michelle and Lana, along with our family, our friends, our competitors, the event organisers and the workshops who have helped us along the way. Finally, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the extremely talented photographers and videographers whose work I've used in this video. And the same to the thousands of followers that have joined us on Facebook, YouTube, GT Planet and the Cars Instagram. The support for this car, both locally and from around the world, has been truly incredible. Her wings may have been clipped, but mark my words when I say that the Superbird will fly again. Thank you for watching.